we are taking bleeding as an example to study about the compensatory mechanisms of our body so bleeding is also known as hemorrhage or simply blood loss it is defined as loss of blood from circulation so bleeding is going to cause decrease in blood pressure decrease in cardiac output decrease in blood volume it is also associated with pain and there is fear so these are components of bleeding and we are going to look at the compensatory mechanisms how they are going to respond through these components to bring the cardiac output and blood pressure to the normal state so uh, decrease in blood pressure is going to activate baroreceptors baroreceptors present in our aortic arch and carotid sinus and there is pain and fear this also too is going to act in the activation of vasomotor system so activation of bar baroreceptors and pain and fear along with limbic system is going to activate our vasomotor center vasomotor center so it is going to cause firing of the vasomotor center vasomotor center causes two things when it is fired it activates our sympathetic nervous system and adrenal medulla adrenal medulla sympathetic nervous system it causes venoconstriction that is going to increase venous return and it increases cardiac output then there is arterial constriction which is going to increase our total peripheral resistance increase our total peripheral resistance and that is going to increase our diastolic blood pressure cardiac output increases our systolic blood pressure so this is sympathetic nervous system uh, the main function of this is increase in heart rate it stimulates our SA node and that is going to increase our heart rate then it also increases the contractility of the ventricles which is going to increase our stroke volume and these two together is going to increase cardiac output so this is sympathetic nervous system then adrenal medulla so adrenal medulla secretes epinephrine and that is going to increase our heart rate and it also increases stroke volume and both of these together is increasing cardiac output so there is these two systems acting there then we have got due to decreased amount of blood in circulatory system and decreased blood pressure there is going to be decreased in the renal perfusion renal perfusion and that stimulates our juxtaglomerular juxtaglomerular cells that provides renin so juxtaglomerular is secreting renin how renin is going to act is 
there's angiotensinogen produced by liver and renin converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 uh, by the S which is angiotensinogen converting enzyme secreted by endothelial in the pulmonary vessels so S converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2 so there's angiotensin 2 related functions and this angiotensinogen 2 is going to cause secretion of aldosterone from adrenal cortex so there is renin angiotensin and aldosterone so this is called renin angiotensin aldosterone system so renin causes activation of RAAS this system is activated angiotensinogen 2 is going to cause venoconstriction that again increases venous return and then cardiac output by increasing endostolic volume then there is arterial constriction that increases total peripheral resistance then there is secretion of aldosterone by this system and aldosterone act on last part of the nephron and causes water retention increased water and sodium retention and that is going to increase our blood volume uh, angiotensinogen angiotensin 2 also activates our thirst center so that we will get thirsty and drink water which helps in increasing our blood volume so this is RAAS then we have got uh, hypothalamus so due to decreased blood flow or decreased blood pressure sensed by hypothalamus hypothalamus it is going to secrete ADH through posterior pituitary and ADH is again also going to increase water retention. It brings aquaporins 2 on the surface of the cells on luminal side and that is going to increase water retention and increase blood volume. So there is hypothalamus. ADH and angiotensin 2 it they also causes secretion of endothelin 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 is the most potent vasoconstrictor so it causes vasoconstriction that is going to increase our blood pressure simply so these are the five components So these are the components that are going to work when there is decrease in blood pressure or cardiac output and they tries to increase cardiac output through different mechanisms and also causes increase in blood volume and that is going to increase our blood pressure so that our vital organs and um, organs distant from heart is going to have adequate amount of blood supply so these are the components uh, vasomotor center which activates sympathetic nervous system and it also in stimulates adrenal medulla then there is juxtaglomerular glomerular cells then hypothalamus 
and endothelium endothelium is released by endothelium of the blood vessels